Mm -hmm. If you could, I would do more than that. I would do like a 20-hour fasting with a four-hour eating window, or even do OMAD where you're mm -hmm. eating one meal a day. Ну, я тоже так думаю. То есть она да, понимаешь? Да, да, да. Да, по сей говорил тоже, да, да. Ну, да, да. Вот это и есть. Наверное. Ну да, вот это и есть. Ну да, 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 да. Ну да, 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 да. Кардиоскулярный термин, но это он не увидит. А, ну да, да. Ну, в гост. С пирогами.
Отличка, но у меня отличка. В камеру туда. Дальше Now, in addition to that, I would do weekly fasting for two days. It's four to eight hours. Very, very important. Every week, if you can't do two days of fasting, then do two days of 500 calories. Now, to me, that's going to be a lot more difficult because you haven't really adapted to that, and you're just lowering. Calories? I think that's... I don't know, all right, so what do you do if you have cancer? Well, you want to do regular fasting, but you want to step it up to at least 18 hours fasting with a six-hour eating window. And if you could, I would do more than that. I would do like a 20-hour fasting with a four-hour eating window, or even do OMAD, where you're eating one meal a day. Now, in addition to that, I would do weekly fasting for two days. That's four to eight hours. Very, very important. Every week, if you can't do two days of fasting, then do two days of 500 calories. Now, to me, that's going to be a lot more difficult because you haven't really adapted to that, and you're just lowering calories. And if you eat just a little bit, you're going to be more hungry. But it has been shown that a calorie-restrictive diet uh, can actually be very beneficial to help someone with cancer. All right, then once a month, I would recommend fasting for at least four days, but I would recommend going up to seven days if possible. That's once a month. And then when you eat, the main dish should be cruciferous vegetables, okay, and a lot of them. And so maybe your meal would have a base of bread. Broccoli, or maybe it would be kale, or cabbage, or cauliflower. And there's a lot of different great recipes that you can make with this base of cruciferous. Now, why would you recommend cruciferous? Number one, it's low in protein. Number two, it's low in fat. It's low in carbs. It has huge anti-cancer properties. It also is anti-angiogenic. What's that? That is a property that helps to start off the cancer of its blood vessels, okay? It's a thing I haven't talked about, but it's, it can help with that. Because if the cancer cells can't get a blood supply, they die. And cruciferous also help increase phase one, phase two detoxification of your liver, helping to minimize carcinogens. So I would recommend about 10 cups, okay, per day. Now, if you're doing OMAD, one meal a day, that would just be 10 cups in that one meal. Now, as a side dish, you would want to have low protein, okay, not high protein. So maybe it's like three ounces of protein. The type of protein I would recommend would be uh, protein high in omega-3, fatty fish, sardines, you know, even cod liver, things like that. Omega-3 fatty acids are very, very, very beneficial when someone has cancer. Now, as far as fat goes, olive oil would be uh, probably one of the best fats that you can consume. It has wonderful anti-cancer properties. And cod liver oil, being omega-3, fat treatment, intensification of your liver, helping to minimize carcinogens. So that is a proper number two, it's low in fat, it's low in carbs, it has huge anti-cancer properties, it also has is anti-angiogenic, what's that? That is a property that no, helps no, to no, start no. off the cancer of its no, blood no, vessels, no, no. okay? It's a thing I Okay, per day. 
Now, if you're doing OMAD, one meal a day, that would just be 10 cups in that one meal. Now, as a side dish, you'd want to have low protein, okay? Not high protein, so maybe it's like two, because if the cancer cells can't get a blood supply, they die. And cruciferous also help increase phase one, phase two detoxification of your liver, helping to minimize carcinogens. So I would... recommend about 10 cups okay per day now if you're doing OMAD one meal a day that would just be 10 cups in that one meal now as a side dish you'd want to have low protein okay not high protein so maybe it's like three ounces that I would do weekly fasting for two days it's four to eight hours very very important every week if you can't do two days of fasting then do two days of 500 calories now to me, that's going to be a lot more difficult because you haven't really adapted to that and you're just lowering calories. And if you eat just a little bit, you're going to be more hungry. But it has been shown that a calorie-restricted diet uh, can actually be very beneficial to help someone with cancer. All right, then once a month, I would recommend fasting for at least four days, but I would recommend going up to seven days if possible. That's once a month. And then when you eat, the main dish should be cruciferous vegetables, okay, and a lot of them. And so maybe your meal would have a base of broccoli, or maybe it would be kale, or cabbage, or a base of broccoli, or maybe it would be kale, or cabbage, or cauliflower. And if ну смотри, просто вот по логике, что проще всего добыть, что является для человека проще всего добыть. То есть у тебя ни зубов, ни пилы нету, ни такой у тебя мускулатуры нет нормально, чтобы отламывать даже, что-то выкапывать там. То есть взял кутяшка и апельсинку, там. вкусно пахнет, блин, вообще же. Что, не, не понимаешь, что ли? Нет? Что там, не знаю, ну, фрукт какой-то, яблоко там, апельсинку, не знаю, что у вас там, груша, что там, не пидор. Да, да, да. А вехи их надо добывать, как бы, да, они какие еще и надо догадаться, то есть, понимаешь. Нет, ну ради хочешь понять. Ну что самое, то, да, да, то есть на одних фруктах можно прожить, понимаешь? Если ты на юге живешь по солнцем, то тебе, да, вот манги, три штуки манги сажал, наверное, лучше, чем котлета, наверное, будет. Ну, не знаю, я к примеру тебе говорю. Да, то есть, ну да, ну, другие, но по же всяких там эти каштаны, я не знаю, не разбираюсь. Да. Не суть. Ну, ну нет, короче, фрукты не капят. Они все невкусные, их вообще не, они не съедобные. Надо понимать, вот это не видите. Ну, это по идее как бы природная пища человека. То есть это натуральная пища для наших тел людских. Фрукты. Не овощи причем, а фрукты. Что такое овощи? Овощи это листья. 
листья это корова, лошадь корова, не человек, с тройной челюстью, с двойными желудками, то есть, с четверными или пищеварительными трактами какими-нибудь, это не человеческая еда. И аппетита она, как правило, ну ты, ну это понятно, что искусственно можно, ну понятно, но аппетита от того, что ты нюхаешь капусту или листья, чего-то нету, а вот когда ты это самое, вот это реально, понимаешь, когда запахло только яблочком сверху настоящим. А, Что не так, что ли? Ну, которая вот, ну да, да, при кушении народа. Ну надо, надо же, не. Ну нет, ну да, ну вот это я делаю. Я просто пытаюсь доказывать, что... Ну как, что значит доказывать? Ну давайте порассуждаем вместе. Что тогда для человеческого тела, что съедобно, что нет? Есть можно все что угодно, мясо сырое можно есть, что угодно, то есть это, и в принципе все это переварится, просто извини. Я имею в виду, что нормально, что природно для нас, то что будет как бы соответствовать нормальному поведению, нормальному мировоззрению, может мироощущению даже, нормальной карме, то есть что будет не травматично, для чего не надо будет даже вандализма никакого совершать, понимаешь? То есть, а то есть залезать, нет, я не боюсь, ну он про себя думает, что надо залезть на дерево, можно потрясти, ну даже, ну и залез на дерево, сорвал яблоко и что дальше, и даже, и не все деревья не настолько высоки там, да, я понимаю. То есть, ну она себе так говорит, да, 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 ну наоборот, да, ну вот наоборот, да нет, ну наоборот, да нет. Ну, вот, ну да, да. Ну, и вот сейчас представь себе, что если ты будешь, если все будут печатать, то есть ни, никто работать не сможет тогда. Я тебе просто так скажу, что, <laughs> что ты не, не выживешь на это, на это. Да, да, понимаю. А, ну, ты, может быть, и сможешь, но только можешь заболеть, да. Потому что, да, ну, меня это не касается, <laughs> понимаю, ты, да, да, да. Потому что почему ты ешь всякую нехорошую вещь? Одно с другим взаимосвязано, понимаешь? То есть, да, и, наверное, ну не знаю, ну, если сразу получать, ну да, ну только, тогда надо догонять уму сразу же, да, понимает. Сознание, да, понимает. Потому что, не знаю, и, ну то есть специально, а я, с умом вместе идет этой специальности, все, и йогу из жопы достать надо будет тоже, наверное. Вот ее специальностью, например, профессии своей, и еще что-нибудь. Мне не касается, да. Да, и видим что-то давать, правильно понимаешь? Не те люди, которые думают, понимают, да. А реально, да, понимают, он тебе знает. Ну, долго история, когда все вам Ну, суть же живая, да. Ну, это тоже, кстати, жить захочет. Ну, хорошо, а дальше ты что будешь делать? А что, нету никого дальше уже? Ладно. There's a lot of different great recipes that you can make with this base of cruciferous. Now, why would you recommend cruciferous? Number one, it's low in protein. Number two, cruciferous. <laughs> Ну кто да, 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 то есть гнев ограничешь, то есть это в принципе, да, понятно. Ну это все читаемо, в принципе, да. Ну да. Ну да, а, ну да. Ну вот это он имеет в виду. У меня тоже такое висит, но все равно это решается каким-то, не то что даже отдыхом, а самоосознанием. Потому что тебя здесь никто не ждет, и за тебя никто ничего не знает. Никто не я понимаю. Это все отношения, они все как бы, да, ты понимаешь, что женщина в мужском месте, это зло. Начинаешь понимать меня, что немножко. Да, ладно, проехали. Если ты понимаешь, да. Ну ничего хорошего, то есть, то есть это не обязательно, это не нужно. Все, это не, все нормально, это не нужно. Да. Ладно, забудь. Да, да. 
It's low in carbs. Mm -hmm. It has huge anti-cancer properties. It also has, is anti-angiogenic. Mm -hmm. What's that? That is a property that yeah, helps to start off the cancer of its... Ну, для себя тоже, потому что, да. А, кристаллизация, крусы, да, короче. Да. Наоборот, да, наоборот, да. Blood vessels, okay? Mm. It's a thing I haven't talked about, but it's it can help with that. Because if the cancer cells can't get a blood supply, they die. And cruciferous also help increase phase one, phase two detoxification of your liver, helping to minimize carcinogens. So I would recommend about 10 cups, okay, per day. Now, if you're doing OMAD, one meal a day, that would just be 10 cups in that one meal. Now, as a side dish, you'd want to have low protein, okay? Not high protein. Okay? So maybe it's like three cup. <laughs> three ounces of protein. The type of protein I would recommend would be uh, protein high in omega-3, fatty fish, sardines, you know, even cod liver, things like that. Omega-3 fatty acids are very, very, very beneficial when someone has cancer. Now, as far as fat, good fat, sardines, you know, even cod liver, things like that. Omega-3 fatty acids are very, very, very beneficial when someone has cancer. Now, as far as fat goes, olive oil would be uh, probably one of the best fats that you can consume. It has wonderful anti-cancer properties. And cod liver oil, being omega-3, apparently, even though it's a fat, won't turn into ketones and won't feed the cancer the raw material for its memories. <laughs> now, if you can add cruciferous sprouts, as in broccoli sprouts, you'll have even a more... Мне просто интересно, я да, 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 not everyone is going to be able to eat this way. Now, the main reason why we are doing this study is to figure out what we can do to not only enhance the benefits of fasting, but also to come up with a method of blocking this chemical pathway, this door called Scott, which would really be beneficial for those people who just cannot do fasting, whether they're...
если ты так думаешь, что люди должны рождаться, значит ты должен растворяться в вакууме. Не знаю, как ты должен воспарить, правильно раствориться, как угодно. Понимаешь? Ты, да, в йоге своей ты должен просто ее, что вот как в воздух превратиться, понимаешь? Вот, да, да, да. Если так не происходит, значит говори не о чем. Точка у всех психбольных ракает на уроды просто. И смерть хотят размножаться, но не умеют. Ты же 
So let me just kind of break it down and make it really, really fast. Keto or ketosis. What does keto mean? When you burn fat, your fat breaks down into these things called ketones. Your body can then use those as fuel. Okay? So your body can actually run in ketones. It's a much, much better fuel source than sugar fuel that most people run on. It's cleaner fuel. It creates a lot of other benefits, which I get into in other videos. Okay, so keto basically means you're burning fat, okay? Healthy keto is a version of regular ketosis, but with a twist. Uh, a principle that I use is you don't lose weight and get healthy. You have to get healthy first to then lose weight. So getting healthy basically means, in relationship to eating, providing all of your nutrients, okay? So you're eating foods that are high quality that provide all the nutrients, so you get the requirements that our bodies need. So what I recommend is something called healthy ketosis. All right? So that's the version. The other action that I recommend is something called IF. What is that? That's intermittent fasting. What is that? That is a, it's not a diet, it's a pattern of eating and not eating. So instead of doing three meals or six meals a day or snacks in between the meals, you're eating less frequently. Why? Because every time you eat, you raise a hormone, insulin. Too much insulin is very dangerous in the body. So what we're trying to do with healthy ketosis and intermittent fasting is reduce the excess of insulin. We're not trying to make it down to zero. We're just trying to get rid of the excess. The vast majority of the population has excess insulin, but they've never been tested. The doctors usually don't test it. They're focusing on your blood sugars or blood glucose, but not fasting insulin, okay? I have videos on that, but just, I'll, you can watch another video, but the point is that we're trying to lower insulin. So to do that, you need to eat less frequently. Let's say you start with three meals per day with no snacks, and then you go to two meals a day, no snacks, and that would be considered intermittent fasting. And some people do one meal a day, but the point is that it's just eating less frequently. It's not necessarily focused on lowering calories. Even though you will be consuming less calories, the focus is not on calories. It's about eating less frequently. At the end of the day, we want to provide all the nutrients, so we need a certain amount of calories. The cool thing about intermittent fasting is that because you're eating less frequent, the requirements for nutrients go down because the body 
starts being conservative with its nutrients. It starts holding or retaining more nutrients. So what you would need for three meals a day, okay, as far as nutrients, you would need less nutrients for two meals a day, just because the body adapts. Sometimes people are concerned about losing muscle mass. Well, the other cool thing is that when you do intermittent fasting, certain hormones, like growth hormone, increases dramatically to protect the muscles from being lost. Okay, so your body tends to now conserve protein as well when you do intermittent fasting, so you're not going to lose muscle mass. So the two main things that help you lower insulin are the reduction of carbohydrates. I'm, I'm talking about the sugar, refined carbs, the grains, the pasta, the cereal, the biscuits, the waffles, the juice, the alcohol. I have a lot of videos on this right here, like a ton, but that just kind of gives you the summary. And also, number two, eating less frequently. What we're doing when we actually drop carbs and we eat less frequently is we're adapting to fat fuel. You're actually making new cellular machinery to run your body on fat fuel, okay, and no longer on sugar. Now, what happens when you consume from the carbs, the insulin comes in and takes it out and converts it to fat. So, right now, as clean people, not so if you have a stuff to this way, we know you have too much insulin. Is there a quick test to know if you have too much insulin? Yes. Just look down right now, and if you can see your belly, you have too much insulin. Because these are the main supports. Belly fat, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, fatigue, especially after eating, decreased cognitive function, lack of focus, poor memory, moody. Irritable, sometimes depressed, grouchy because of the blood sugar issue, cravings for carbs for sure, and you're hungry all the time, especially between meals. When you get your body into fat burning, and now your body is burning fat between meals, because before it wasn't, it was dependent on your diet and dietary sugar. <laughs> so now when you're burning your own fat, wow, you get rid of the hunger. Okay, you're not hungry anymore. It makes it easy to do this. You don't crave anymore. That's why mm -hmm. healthy keto and intermittent fasting is very successful long term because it allows you to stick you to it. Because you're not hungry all the time. You're not craving.